Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about how I study. So a lot of people keep asking, you know, Dimitri, how do you study, uh, especially these technical topics, right? What's kind of the secret behind it here? Um, I've thought about this a lot, right? I don't know if there's necessarily a secret behind it, but I will talk a little bit about how I study in my process here. Um, feel free to give it a shot. I think it is beneficial uh, from the perspective of you need to learn how things actually work and not necessarily memorize things. So I've made a video on that as well. Uh, but let's just dive on in here into what I call connected iterative study here. So we can call it CIS if you want. Uh, but this is kind of my process that I typically go through. And I'll explain this both from a perspective of studying for school, which is very, very different than studying in the real world. Okay, so the process that I follow through is one, I read textbooks, 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 I read academic textbooks. Um, I'm not a big fan of industry books or industry textbooks, you can call them textbooks, but industry materials, for example, like publishers like O'Reilly or Manning Publishing, things like that. Uh, they just don't have the rigor, the information, the knowledge, the peer reviewedness of just a better written academic textbook here. Um, so step one is I read a textbook. Uh, step two is I highlight as I read through the text. So look for something important, um, some kind of key attribute of how something is done, why something makes sense. Again, don't over highlight everything just for the sake of highlighting. But as I read, when things kind of like stand out to me, like, oh, I didn't know that, or that seems like a critical idea or something new, um, I will go through and I will highlight those different portions of the book. Uh, sometimes I do take notes in my textbooks. I do not like to write in my textbooks, but when it is something crucial or critical or it ties back to something else, I will take a note uh, and pin on the side of my textbook. Uh, again, in general, I do not take notes, but sometimes I do for that. And then the third step here is actually having some sort of notebook like this. So just a cheap uh, spiral bound notebook, three hole punch. Uh, I just take notes as I study and read, right? You're not going to remember everything you've read, um, writing it down, which I believe scientifically has been proven to actually help you remember it better as you write it down. I take notes again on things that are kind of ideas I have, information I have. So as you read the text, you might highlight some things. Take notes on exactly what is important when you're reading. And the most important step here out of the entire process is write down questions you have about uh, the material you're working on. So I can't emphasize this enough. The entire crux of this solution of how I study here is going to be asking the question why. Okay. And this is where it's going to deviate a little bit between academics, like studying for school and studying for the real world. So studying for school, often you need to memorize equations, information, and you just need to regurgitate it on an exam. Okay. And that's fine. And you can get, I don't know, four hours student and that's fine and dandy, but that's not really learning the material. Uh, learning the material, at least for me, takes a long time. I am extremely slow reader uh, because this is the way I study. I ask questions constantly as I read. And so you need to be taking notes as you read and asking questions in the notes uh, and then leaving some space below it to actually come back with a response. So after I've read the text, which is step one, uh, step two, I've highlighted as I've gone. Step three is taking notes and asking questions. Uh, step four is going to be actually going back and looking up the answers to these questions. But I do this on a different day. Okay, so I like to spend like, I don't know, three, four hours studying, reading like a chapter. Okay, I take a long time to read it. I highlight and make a lot of notes and I write a lot of questions. Come back another day later and actually look up those kind of those questions, right? You're looking for those answers. Uh, now, the way I do this is probably different than a lot of people. Uh, and this is where the connective kind of piece comes in the connected iterative study process here. Uh, I actually go back and I look for other resources. So if you have other textbooks or even online, there are free textbooks available a lot of times in PDF version. Uh, I look for textbooks and I look for academic resources. Now it is far easier to use the internet and to search for things. Uh, but 99.9% .9 of the time I have found the internet is just wrong. So you get the wrong conclusion, you get the wrong ideas, and then it makes it a lot more challenging in the future to connect things. So what I do often is use the internet. If I don't have another textbook on that topic, I search the idea, I find someone else's, call it an opinion here, and I look for academic sources that back it. So really good online uh, forums, for example, will say, you know, uh, this is how you do, I don't know, stationarity testing, and this is why, you know, this test is better. And then it will have some sort of academic source 
That's the first piece. The second piece is going back and looking for academic papers on your own. So even though you find an answer and it sounds reasonable, um, I start looking online for academic papers that somewhat support that perspective here. So I need to answer all these questions that I have on the whys. And then finally, the fifth step here is just writing down all those answers in your notes. So when you go back through this, now I do this as an iterative process somewhat. Um, so I've read everything. Somewhat iterative is that you need to go look for answers and reread the same topics that you've already read. So you've already read something, you had some sort of question that wasn't very clear. Uh, now you're going to reread and try to connect those ideas and those papers that you looked up back to the original text here. And then you add all those answers into your notes and your text. So the way that I think this works for me at least, so again, this is just my perspective, is that the way people teach the way the textbooks are written, for example. So I like to get multiple textbooks on multiple topics uh, because you end up getting very different perspectives on things. So you can have a teacher that's an, I don't know, an economist teaching, uh, let's say time series or like even just basic statistics. You can have a statistics teacher teach you the same material. You can have a math teacher teach you the material. You can have a finance teacher teach you the material. Everybody's going to come from a different perspective and being able to go iteratively through the same material, the same topics, uh, through multiple texts often help you answer the questions or the gaps in your learning. Now the most important piece here, the reason I think that I remember things so well is A, I go super slow because I read everything. And I really think about it as I read um, and trying to ask yourself why, right? A lot of us just read through a textbook super quick or read through a book super quick, but you need to stop and ask yourself why. And then a lot of times there are questions like, well, I don't know why and it doesn't tell you in the textbook. And that's when you need to go through that iterative process of finding other materials, other sources to kind of back those perspectives. And then finally here, some tips that I actually use when I study here is I do not bring my cell phone with me or I put it on silent, right? I cannot study with a cell phone. Um, one of the reasons for this is A, it's super distracting when this thing is buzzing. And you know, it's Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and you have all these things you're looking at. You can't focus on what you're doing. You can't ask the right questions because your mind's not focused on the topic at hand. Um, the other issue is I get really tempted to pull out my phone and start looking up the answers to my questions, right? I just wanna know the answer quickly. And I know a lot of people have kind of that mentality now, especially with social media, you need an instant answer. Um, again, waning a day often is much better because you should be thinking about those questions in your mind um, over that day, so that whole 24 hour, 48 hour period, depending when you get back to the question. Um, and then often I'll find you know, that I've thought about it more deeply, I've tried to connect a few more ideas in my head, and then when I go back and find the actual answer, things just connect a lot quicker. Um, I find a benefit in having kind of that delayed time piece here, so that's another reason I do not have my phone. Um, but find a quiet place as well and a lot enough time to study. So I can't emphasize this enough here. I don't know how students, college students, academics, industry practitioners um, can pick up a textbook and read it in like 30 minutes and then go do something different. Uh, for me, I need like a solid block of time. I need to know that I have no interruptions. I have no other commitments. And I just need to be able to study for that solid block of time. And if I finish early, that's awesome but having enough time to really read like a full chapter, for example, and really go through the ideas and kind of struggle in your mind uh, is important. And again, it kind of goes back to that connectivity here, right? You need to connect the ideas from different academic sources and perspectives and opinions together to create like a full understanding of the idea. Um, anyways, those are my tips, those are my tricks. That's how I study. Again, I am extremely slow at reading, so for an academic perspective, like in college, for example, uh, you might just read through the text quickly. Uh, you might jot down a few questions that you've had, a few gaps or whatnot, and spend a little bit of time on it. Um, in the industry though, so an actual practice as a quant here, I have to understand these things inside and out. I need to understand every single nuance, every single detail, and because of that, I spend a lot of time on just one idea. And so for me, I can spend two, three weeks sometimes on one chapter because I have allotted a few hours here, a few hours there. I have to go back and look up answers and I have to keep going through the process slowly through an entire chapter. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Peace.